Good morning, dear friends. My name is Dr. Sumesh Arora. I'm an intensive care specialist from Sydney. I shall be talking about how to approach multiple choice questions in your preparation and for the actual exam. Before I start, I would like to declare a conflict of interest. I'm closely involved in a website called GoTheExtraMile.com, which provides subscription to multiple choice questions in critical care for exams like European Diploma and Intensive Care Part 1. I would like to thank my dear friend Dr. Yash Javeri, uh, who is the administrator of the Gupti Intensivist that plays a huge role in bringing intensive care community together in India and in many other countries. Now when you start preparing for the MCQ exam, the first question you face is, do you start to study the text first or do you do the multiple choice questions and do some retro reading? Now it is my opinion that a thorough reading of text will help develop an understanding of the principles in critical care which cannot be obtained by retro reading alone. The available question banks in critical care are too small for a retro reading approach to be wholesome and therefore I cannot recommend that. Every trainee who aspires to be an intensive care specialist should have a selection of books or websites that they refer to. Among the books released recently uh, in the last few years, I am quite fond of the Oxford Textbook of Critical Care. It is well organized and I keep it on my Kindle app. I do not have any conflict of interest when I recommend this book. Now that you've started preparing for the questions, uh, there is no other way but to practice, practice and then practice some more. Now you will have to use some strategy as you go but there is no substitute for putting in the hard yards and doing a lot of practice. There is such a philosophy called test enhanced learning which means that doing tests under low intensity scenarios like in the comfort of your lounge and doing on a book will improve the performance in the actual test. Just like we don't see any top players winning Grand Slam tournaments immediately after an injury layoff it is important for an intensive care trainee to have a number of tests under their belt before going into the actual exam. Now once you start preparing for the questions, you will realize that the questions may broadly be classified into two groups. One that you know or you think that you know and the second uh, that you don't. Let me illustrate this by giving an example. Let us say I am doing a test on mechanical ventilation it has 30 questions now I will make a grid with numbers going up to 30 and I have now completed the test now when I complete a test like this on a grid that I have drawn I will circle the answers that I have made a guess I am interested in knowing how many of these do I get correct now I have marked my answers and I shall assess the answers that I was confident with separately from the ones that I guessed. As you can see that there were 20 questions which I thought I knew well but I got 5 of them wrong. Now this may be because I didn't read the question carefully or the answers carefully or I rushed into my answer. With a lot of practice the number of questions uh, that you would get wrong this way should go down. You will also see that among the 10 questions that I guessed, I got 5 of them correct. Once again, uh, when you practice a lot, the number of correct answers that you guessed should go up. There will be times when you cannot eliminate one out of the two choices. When you are faced with a situation like this, imagine both the choices as correct and go by the feel. Sometimes it is easier to feel an answer 
when your memory is failing you. Now I would like to say that this method is more than 50 times accurate out of 100 but I really don't have anything to back up my claim here. While many trainees may possess an incredible stamina to put in say 40 hours of study every two days when it comes to practicing MCQs, it is my opinion that doing a little bit each day helps to process and retain the information much better. But then again, we are creatures of habit. Some of, life, some of us like binge eating, binge watching, and under duress, binge studying. Now you remember when what your daddy said when you were going for those dreadful pre-medical exams. That advice still holds. So, read the question carefully, read the answer carefully, guess thoughtfully, don't rush. If an answer seems too easy, don't give in to temptation. And finally, answer all the questions. In part two of this presentation, I would like to so show some common errors that could cost you the marks. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.